Today's video is going to show you how to bake a donut. Baking donuts isn't new to me. I've done this before. In fact, I have an entire collection of them. And if you look at the descriptions of these demos, you'll see that uh, inside those descriptions, there are links to articles or talks I gave on the topic. And if you look at the code, you'll see that there's always something in common for all the animated things. There's a positioning element. And inside it, there's the element on which I actually apply the animation. In this case, there are the bars which I rotate in 3D. And first I position them with the positioner element in 3D using a 3D transform. And then the prism element actually animates the bars in, in, in 3D, rotating them in 3D. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to use one set of keyframes for all the bars. And if I use up the transform property with the positioning, then how can I animate the transform? I've already used it up for positioning. How can I use it, use it inside the animation again? Well, I can chain the positioning transform in front of the rotation. But this means one set of keyframes for each and every single bar. Fortunately, things have changed for the better. And I'm going to show you today how to use one element and one set of keyframes. And this is using CSS custom properties. So let's see the HTML structure. First of all, there's an assembly. And inside it, I have 36 rings. So a ring class on each of these elements. And then inside each ring, I'm going to have 18 dots. So a dot class. And this is it for the HTML structure. Now for the CSS, we're going to have a dot diameter before anything else. And we set it to 0.75 ms, which is initially 12 pixels. So now for the dot element, we give it a width of this dot diameter. And the height is going to be equal. So both dimensions are equal. Um, and let's give it a background so that we can see it. This should do for now. Now we see something, but those don't look like dots. So let's fix this. Border radius, 50%, so that's round no matter the dimensions. All right, but we want to absolutely position all divs. So we set position absolute. And we want everything in the middle. So we're going to use the assembly for this. Assembly, and we set top 50%. And the same thing for left. Oh, left, not top. All right, but this isn't exactly in the middle. If we do something like this, you'll see that it's not exactly in the middle. And the way we fix this is with a negative margin of half the diameter. So dot diameter, and now it's dead in the middle and we can remove that line from there. All right, now let's position these dots on a ring in 3D. So we loop for i from zero to the number of dots for each element, so nth child i plus 1, and we have plus 1 here because the nth child index is 1 based and the index of our loop i is 0 based. And we haven't defined n dots, so let's do that. The number of dots is 18, just like for the HTML structure. And we're also going to define a base dot angle, which is going to be the full circle, 360 degrees, over the number of dots. So we're going to set a rotation around the x-axis here. And this is going to be i times the base dot angle. And now that we've done this, we set a transform here, which is going to be a rotate around the x-axis, where we're going to use this rx. And this by itself doesn't do much. So we also 
move this further using a translate Z which is going to take the ring radius which gives us an error because we haven't defined the ring radius so let's do that 5 ms and now we have the dots positioned in 3d but this doesn't look much like 3d so we want to have 3d transformed elements inside other 3d transformed elements and to do that we need to use transform style reserve 3d because this allows us to do this thing so now that we've done this let's apply a transform on the assembly and let's say it's a rotate y of i don't know 15 degrees so this looks more 3d but let's add some perspective first of all let's set an overflow hidden in case we need it so we don't get scroll bars and stuff and this is going to be our scene and we want it to have full height so it's 100 viewport height units and now for the perspective 20 ms which might seem exaggerated at first but it helps us see things better so now this looks more 3d and what we're going to do is pretty much the same thing as for the dot for the ring and i'm going to replace dot here with ring and this should do and also here i'm not going to have rx it's going to be ry but i haven't defined the number of rings in the base ring angle so let's do that so the number of rings is 36 just like in the dom structure and we're going to have a base ring angle which is going to be again 360 degrees the full circle over the number of rings and now we're going to set a transform which is going to be a rotate y and we're going to use our r y And again, by itself, this doesn't do uh, that much. It creates a nice sphere, but that's not what we want. We want a donut. So, again, we translate this in 3D. And we're going to use the torus radius in this case. And we haven't defined this, so let's do it now. it eight it's better and this looks like something but it looks like a weird spotted leopard something so let's make it less crowded um no not background back face visibility in and it now looks weird <laughs> so let's tweak the perspective origin a bit and horizontally it's going to stay at 50 percent but vertically we want to see the whole thing a bit from above so we're going to subtract a bit from 50 percent and let's say something that depends on the torus radius okay this is weirder let's try something here um 30 degrees but a rotate x not y and this looks better but it's too in front so let's use a translate z again depending on the torus radius and this is a lot better but we want it wider a bit so let's use a scale x which this looks good okay so this is it but it's just black dots so let's make things more interesting oh 
All right, so we read the length of our palette and let's go back to the dots. For I from one, this time we make our loop one based through N. And by the way, the difference between two and through means that two, it doesn't go to this value and dots. Through means it does take the value and nth child and we're going to have n n plus um, i and background and it's going to be the from the palette we pick the i color and this looks nice but not that visible so let's fix this with a background a dark background let's make it black on the body and this looks better but we just have rings of yellow rings of blue it doesn't look that great so let's add an extra rotation here uh, and this is going to be an rx and it's going to use the dot angle but at half so we're going to add an extra rotation here a rotate x which is going to use this rx and this looks a lot more interesting now all right now let's animate the rings so we set some keyframes rx and we're going to have 0% to 75% we're going to have no motion and then to 100% we're going to change the transforms a bit and we're going to take this part of the transform and we're going to put it inside a base transform chain which we're going to call BC so BC is our base transform chain and the initial transform is this one from here and the final one is going to be pretty similar, except we're going to change this X angle a bit. And what we're going to do is subtract N times, so it lands on the same color, the dot angle. And here we're going to need an animation, Rx, on the duration, which we haven't defined. So, and an is in out, uh, infinite, and we're also going to set a delay here. So this is going to be our delay, which is going to be minus i times the animation duration over the number of rings. Okay, and we're going to use this delay here. And... Now let's set the animation duration finally, and this should work. Yes, it works. And we can set another rotation keyframes are Y for the assembly, and it's going to go so uh, just like. Um, in the previous situation we're going to use a base chain and then we're going to use an actual transform which is going to use this base chain and then it's going to have a rotation um, a Y rotation which is going to be zero turns initially and then at the end we're going to make it one turn so then we're going to have an animation here which is going to be something like 43 seconds and this is going to be RY, the animation name um, and it's going to be linear and infinite so yeah this is it I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any other suggestions leave them in the comments below or throw them on Twitter and this is it for today